What's up, everybody? We're going to give you the mid-year 2024 outlook. We're going to talk about stocks, where they've been. We're going to talk about the consumer, talk about the election, really giving you kind of a full breakout of where we've been, kind of where we're going. And I tell you what, it's a diverse agreement on what's going to happen out there between LPL, JP Morgan, Carson Investment Group, and there's some others on here, which are not affiliated with LPL Financial, but I like to bring in some third-party sources as well. So let's start getting into this. So this is a picture of the Kentucky Derby. And you see the horses down here. They're out of the gate. When you're betting, if you do bet, not saying to do that, but anybody placing wagers on horses, right, they've got a reason that certain horses are going to finish in certain places, win, play, show, whatever it may be. There's actually some people right now betting on horses in the investment arena that maybe the actual horses run backwards out of the gate and go over that way. That would not be good. These horses right here, cruising around, all of a sudden, bam, not good. So what do you do in that situation where you have some people saying, hey, the market's still strong, but then some people think there could be a pretty decent pullback? Well, if you're one of our clients, you kind of know what we strive to do, and that's put money into different buckets at different phases of your retirement, or if you're in a growth phase, trying to minimize downside and still give you growth on the upside, striving to do that. No guarantees. But as Warren Buffett said, his first rule of investing, don't lose money. Second rule, C number one. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. Let's get into this and see where we've been. So I'm going to get out of the way of this. This is a, this is a great one to start with. The S&P 500 is up over 15% year to date, which is denoted by this line. If you take out the hottest stock in the S&P 500, NVIDIA, which is the chip stock of AI, if you will, it's, it only is up about 10%. If you take out the Magnificent Seven, all right, seven stocks, which they are Apple, Amazon, Google, Facebook, now Meta, uh, Microsoft, NVIDIA, which I mentioned in Tesla, it drops to this wonderful red line here. It's up only about 4%. Seven stocks have make that really been dri driven this up dramatically. New highs for the year. If you look on here, we're about 31 on top of my head for the year. New highs reached. 44 was the ultimate high back in 1995. So people think, hey, you know, we're getting all these new highs. Is that a concern that we have? The other thing is, which is right above my head, is this green line running straight across. The average drop every year in the in pullback in a stock market is about 14%. We have only seen that about 5% so far this year. So people are saying, hey, it may be a concern there. Current bull market approaching two years. Historically, it goes up about 50, 50 uh, 60% over a two-year cycle. We're getting close to that. And, you know, is that con a concern there that the market's run up so big? Then we have the Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey, which you're seeing up here now. They, they asked all these managers Global managers, what are your biggest concerns? And some of the ones that have increased a lot here lately is, believe it or not, higher inflation still, even though we've seen a dramatic drop, they're still concerned about that. Geopolitics, obviously, you still got Ukraine, Russia, that stuff going on. The U.S. election. So if anybody saw the debate recently, and obviously with Trump in the news too, there could be a scenario where we may not even have these two candidates to vote for when it comes election time. So, and this is not LPL's opinion, it's just I'm throwing out some thoughts there, but if you get that kind of uncertainty, what's that gonna do to the marketplace? Or maybe that makes it better, I don't know. I'm not saying one way or another here, but that's uh, a big concern out there for global managers along with um, economic hard landing has kind of dropped. So a lot of people think there's gonna be a massive recession that seems to be waning systematic credit event like we had back in 08, 09, kind of not a big deal still. And then 5% uh, AI bubble, which I just talked about, is that uh, going to happen? Uh, a lot of these big managers, and let me switch um, spots on this here for a second. Uh, a lot of these big managers are thinking that the market by the year end is going to be from a wide range, all the way down here, 4,200 from JP Morgan, all the way at the top of Evercore is actually, you can't see it, but it's 6,000 on there, but all these big companies, I'll take myself on off of here. I've got different ranges and some of these have already been hit because we're in the 5,400, 5,500 range at this time. Now, what does this mean for predictions? 
I always throw this one out, which is amazes me. This is from the Federal Reserve Board note back in 2021-20, where the Fed was predicting that interest rates would be at 2.5% longer run, and especially in 2023, at 0.6. We all know where they are now, 5.5%. So can you really rely on a lot of these people in the White House and, and all that stuff in Congress and all these money managers making decisions? I don't know. you got to be very cognizant of this. So LPL financials standpoint. So that's our broker dealer that we utilize to house our client's money. They expect the economic slowdown. You know, how big? Definitely seeing slower spending, softening labor market, probably rate cuts by the year end coming away. I think that COVID jump from all that money that's being spent finally coming to somewhat of an end. I got another chart back here that talks about that too. But they're seeing over here far on your far right up on this corner, gross domestic product probably running at about 1.8% by year end, 4% on unemployment. That's a slight tick up. So this down, this up, those two, again, showing slowdowns in here. Inflation hanging in, keeping down lower. And then the Fed funds rate dropping to 5 and 8% on the prime rate, which is a big impact on lending rates out there. So their prediction, and I'll jump out of this for a second, they're saying by year end about 48 to 4,900 on the S&P. So that would also be a drop from where we are currently. Concerns geopolitics, which I mentioned before. And they are talking about taking a look at alternative investments, which is one of the things that I had mentioned before out there that there could be ways to minimize your risk. If we don't know which way the market's going to go, setting up your portfolio properly and hedging on downside, striving to do that could help out. But We'll get into some more of that later on here. Okay, let's look at next charts. They also talk about markets are pricing in a neutral rate out there from the standpoint of interest rates on the Fed. And what that's meaning is typically, historically, they look at about 2.5% on the Fed funds rate as being the rate that they're targeting. But there are a lot of people think that targeted rate now is three and a half percent on the Fed funds rate, which is a not a big a drop. And another point to this is that that when those rates were so low before, is that the, the U.S. and all the people that had mortgages they went out and tapped into that equity in their properties, did a ton of refinancing, and now we're hitting all those lows. So, do we have any steam left from that to help drive markets on spending and everything in there? And that's why you know. There's a mention of bonds. You know, if the market drops, can bonds do well? Historically speaking, they've done about 6.14% you know, out there, roughly in that range. But the issue with that is if we don't get a bigger drop in rates that people are thinking about, maybe they won't do as well. And if we get inflation, like some of the other people are talking about, still go back up, then bonds may not do as well either. This is just a look, and this is from Carson investment research group that if they did drop rates, what would happen to the bond prices out there? Would they go up, go down? So if you drop rates, historically speaking, usually you bond prices or market value going up of bonds. And this shows up here in this thing that the market, you know, one and a half percent drop in interest rates usually equates to about a 14% in the U.S. bond aggregate index going up in there. But again, if we don't get these massive drops one way or another, that could be the thing. And that's why embracing agility in a volatile market, looking at alternative investments I mentioned before, because what if we did get another crazy big drop? These are the largest drops Dow Jones industrial averages seen going all the way back to 1929. You see the big one way up there during the Great Depression, 89%. And I think then we point out 2009, the great financial crisis a 54%, and then COVID uh, dropped about 37%. So that source there is right there. The S&P Dow, S&P 500 Dow Jones Indices Group is where that source is. And I'll take myself off there to see that for compliance purposes. All right, so now we see some potential negatives. Now let's look at the positive. So this is what I'm talking about, big diverse uh, situation here. This comes from Carson uh, investment research. So there are three biggest reasons why they think the economy growth is still strong and likely to stay that way. So they point out that leading economic indicators that they track, which is 
consumer related indicators, housing, business, manufacturing activity, sentiment, financial markets, if you look on this chart up here, are all still very neutral to positive. So there's not anything massive negative down here like we saw during the last recessions during COVID, the great financial crisis and all that. They also point out here on these charts, look at the projections of profit margins getting better on companies up here and then earnings on companies still looking to grow them out there. They also point out on this that inflation is getting more concentrated in the middle again before it was all spread out, really affecting everything. But now it's starting to come back prior to like it was to COVID. Prior to COVID in this chart here, it's getting very similar to that again, that inflation is getting more in check and a broad base and still some areas got to focus on. Well, they're showing here, if you have a market up over 10%, like we've had, and it shows what's going to happen historically to the market, can't predict going forward, but Historically speaking, the next, the rest of the year, when you have a market up double digits since the beginning of the year, it does another seven plus percent. And then over a year, it's another 25 up over that period. And then the labor market they talk about here, very strong in this upper right corner. The three month average of jobs right now, 249,000 new jobs. And that's more than pre-COVID back in 2019, 169. So the job market's strong, which is equating to employee compensation and disposable income being relative to inflation still being good. So that looks good based on their situation. Uh, so a lot of potential good things. And then we showed you the negative. So here's some stuff on the election. So this is what I wanted to mention too. What happens if Biden wins, but you have an all Democratic Congress, or if you have Biden wins, you have a split Congress. So there's all kind of stuff where you have Biden wins and you have a Republican con Congress. And that's what this is talking about. House out outcome of who wins if we are still voting for these guys at, in November. <laughs> if the House is taken by the Democrats, Republicans, if it's the Senate and so forth on here, or if, you know, they split or whatever. I think the biggest one that we see on here, two of them, and I'll get out of the way so you can see this is that right here, if Biden wins, you get an all-democratic Congress. They want to raise corporate taxes. So what would that do? And they're only talking about doing a partial extension of the Trump tax cuts, which is a huge thing that was put in place by the Trump administration, that tax cuts in 2017, they really lowered tax brackets for everybody. And Biden's talking about he doesn't want to continue those completely on. So there'd be a partial Corporate taxes could go up because he wants to raise the corporate tax from 21%. Probably not going to change the tariffs. He kept the tariffs from Trump on. But that could be an impact. Corporate taxes, what does that do? Higher taxes, does that increase inflation to costs and goods? Because now they got to pay, raise more money to pay their employees and so on and so forth. Or do they lay off employees? Then flip on the other side is if Trump wins, even with a split Congress, I mean, I think they probably meant this being an all Republican Congress up here, that there would be full extension of those tax cuts that they had, which could be inflationary, no increase on the corporate tax rates. So there'd be a higher risk potentially of tariffs still being on and the deficit would go up, which could be a lot of spending situation, which then we get into that could be inflationary, but it could spur the economy and just offset things. So that's two things. But when it comes to the election and stock market returns. A lot of people, oh, like a lot of people didn't like Obama and they got out of the market. The market went up tremendously. A lot of people didn't like Trump and the market still went up a lot. A lot of people didn't like Biden. The market still went up. That's the point here is that historically speaking, it doesn't typically really matter who's in the office. I mean, the ultimate scenario historically, if you want to look at it, is a Democrat, and again, I'm not picking sides here or anything, Democratic president with a Republican Congress is number one, up 16.9% on this whole docket here. And then if you go over to the right, you get a 15 point or 13.7%, I'll blow this up a little more, 13.7% increase with a Republican president and a split Congress. So very interesting there, but again, you can see it's not a tremendous amount of difference of return on it. And I mentioned this before about it's not really politics, who's on what side, really what are the policies? And number one, 
what kind of innovation is going on? We got AI going on right now. What's going to be the next big innovation? Are companies making profits there? Are we able to adapt to crisis situations, which historically humans have been able to do? So new products, new ideas have typically driven the markets historically higher and higher and higher over time. And that's what we're seeing right now with this AI situation. And this is an, an interesting chart here showing if you had invested 1 million as a start point. So it grew to 32.5 million since 1950, just investing. If you just wanted to invest under Democratic presidents, 3.12 million, Republicans, 1.04. So for what it's worth, again, just investing and not necessarily worrying about things has historically been no guarantees going forward, but that's what it is. And then historically, when it comes to a presidential cycle, the fourth year of a new president, he's in his fourth year. It's a new president. It's not a lame duck where he's going out. We got to elect two more uh, presidents. But if you look at this, in a fourth year of a new president, the market historically has done the best in that second half of the year, which is where we are right now. And then historically, bull markets may last longer than you think. The average is 61 months. We're only at 20, 20 months right now compared to the returns on the upside. And this really gets into, guys, what I was talking about before is setting up your different buckets of money for that first, say, 15 years that are more conservative, if you will. Again, may not be appropriate for you, but historically have that safe money. And then you have that money that's longer term growth. When you get out here, 15, 20 years, you're never going to touch probably looking to strive to get growth and maybe some downside protection on that too. And then finally, again, back to this is striving to find what is going to be the best horse. Who's going to win? Nobody knows for sure. I mean, they could get three quarters of the way around the track and they get hurt. They might be winning now, but maybe something happens, cause them to go down or they start going backwards. And do you have the proper plan in place to protect in different market scenarios, economic scenarios? If you want a second opinion, give us a call. We appreciate all your our current clients' business. We appreciate you. Thank you for your trust over the years and look forward to catching up with you in the second half of the year and talk with you. All right. Thank you very much and have a great rest of your day. And now we're going to roll our disclaimers so you can see that as well. We appreciate it. Thank you.